Hello, welcome. I'm Gary Allen, your landscape design host today. If you were with us last time, you saw us make some drastic changes to this property. The pine trees that lined the perimeter have now been replaced with Viburnum odoratissimum, a full evergreen fast growing hedge. Also, we brought in some sand to create some berming and highlights. And we've established new sod and bed lines to create flow and interest. The installation of our palm trees have added a tropical splash. So we continue with night lighting, plants, and mulch to complete yet another designer's landscape. I basically brought you up close to the front door and the entrance around the side of the house here and um, we're going to do some landscape rehab to this uh, area. Uh, a couple of things we want to kind of take note of, any changes that we're going to make. And First of all, this viburnum hedge that we've used to screen the property out front is going to get so big and take over this wall that we're probably going to remove it, no doubt, so that we can really keep this accented. Oh, and isn't it ironic that we used a Washingtonia palm, six of them, down there in the front yard. This is the only other specimen of its kind, but it's a great little accent, huh? Up front here by the door, we have installed three East Palatka holly trees. The evergreen thought is really comfortable with the homeowner. They want trees and plants that keep their leaves year round, so we've tried to impress upon there. But do you notice one thing about this landscape that the hedges, the ground cover, and the grass, everything's pretty green. We don't really have any color or contrast built in, so that's going to be a challenge of ours. Also, the viburnum hedge goes down along the front of the house and continues across the entrance here. It will take over the windows and overthrow the whole landscape with just a short period of time. So we will reuse that in other areas. There's a big ligustrum back here in the corner. Now that we have our holly tree, we'll replant it. And with night lighting and landscape lighting, we want to play a, an important role of highlighting the trees here, as well as bringing in some of the architecture of the home and really making this entryway exciting. Now, turf grass. I mean, I'm looking at this little design. I don't see any of it anywhere else except over there in the yard. So uh, that will be removed. And the Ilex shilling, they come down over here and go this way with some Indian hawthorn and iris over there, our goal naturally is to create some flow, some movement, some contrast, some color. And this little T intersection we have here is to soften it and have no corners present but a little flow and direction. We have plants on our site and we're ready to talk about that and really set up down the driveway and begin installation. One thing, you know, we try to consider is with this green viburnum hedge in here to somewhat take over the backdrop of the picture, uh, we want to come in with color and contrast on our next levels in because if we just use green plants up against them, we, we kind of lose the effectiveness of what we're trying to achieve here. And that is built-in contrast. Uh, hope you can see this curve and the way it continues. See, last time we came and put all this in together, the sod, and so now we want to build on those lines. I'm going to use color, in this case the lantana, to really connect the thought process from one side of the drive to the other, just like I've done the sod. I mean, it's going right along the bed line there. Hope you can see that line. And I'll, I'll place the lantana right in there, double or triple it. Um, talk about lantana for a while. Yeah, we use it because it, it is a beautiful perennial comes in different colors too. And um, now depending on how cold a climate you're in, uh, under a heavy, heavy cold, a severe freeze, you will lose it altogether. So in that case, it's an annual. But even in those areas, I mean, let me tell you, if you started this plant in the earlier mid spring, as even a little small pot, it doubles and triples and quadruples over the life of one summer and fall and you really get a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. A big splash of color. These bloom all through the heat of the summer months and spring and fall. And uh, 
butterflies are somewhat very attracted to it. And I like it because it just, it never stops. It just continues to flourish, grow, and color. I use the gold quite a bit because it seems to have a, a fuller bloom and a larger bloom, if you will. Lantana camera, or camera, however you might say it. Uh, truly a good multi-purpose perennial or annual, depending on your case. It's so neat the way things shape up. I mean, uh, last time getting our grass established and now building the beds with a few trees in place, it's really starting to come together. There's something that I noticed that uh, it took me a while to really realize, and that is what the homeowners get to see or view as they exit the property. I referred to the landscape house across the street, and look at that picturesque view. In other words, through the gate, the little wing walls there, it's really a nice exit view. See, that we talked about berms last time and how the berm or the hill is being used effectively with the grass rolling over there. But the trees and the use of color and contrast, great things to learn from. Okay, now we're moving out towards the wing wall here and what we've used for color, since we have a light color wall, it's a great opportunity to come in with some foliage that's different than green. And here the penicetum, fountain grass or commonly referred to as foxtail, is a beautiful application of that. If you've got a light color, you want to use dark foliage. If you've got a dark house, well then something light works as good contrast. Uh, the fountain grass, uh, under cold, cold climates, it can burn back a little bit, but uh, does come back year after year. We love the foliage color as well as these beautiful plumes. And you know, you can cut these, kind of spray them with hairspray, and use them for a dried arrangement even. We've balanced three over here, and three behind me. Now, lantana is what we just set up there. This completes really kind of our, our big bowl of lantana in and down the driveway. You see the complement here, how we've got them moving in a circular pattern. Again, the beautiful color there of the penicetum against the taupe or tan color of the house or the uh, wall. And then I, this gives me the opportunity to come in here with just a green boxwood that is a great separation of our gold color. Okay, so the area you just came from will float boxwood down into there. As you continue on around, uh, contrast again is what we're trying to build in. With this green hedge, uh, we've got to break the rules and I want to show you a few things in here. Blue Pacific Juniper. I love this beautiful bluish cast. Now this juniper is, is very cold hardy and we use it for its bluish color in the landscape, but also because it stays nice and low, and we can count on low presentation all the time here. If you look on the inside, I've used the variegated Asiatic Jasmine because last time across the street here, we set up the Laura Pedalum, the Razzleberry, but if you can see the dark color of the foliage and the dark trunks, it just didn't seem to jive. It's almost the same hue. So we thought again we would apply the variegated Asiatic Jasmine here for a highlight, see, or a pickup. And that really makes a lot of sense. It's going to stay extremely low, and that's good, but with the blue juniper, oh, this is going to be a beautiful bed when we get it mulched. No doubt about it. Now let's see what we've used with the lantana up here for contrast repeating some of the same plants and bringing in Aztec. We've used the low juniper, and then the Aztec really it curves and cuts over. We've gone from this side of the bed over here, and then reversed it and gone on the back side over there, kind of using the curve process. But the juniper is lower on the inside. Here, friends, uh, kind of make note that shrubs, taller growing plants, come in three gallon sizes, most of them. But here we've used one gallon plants. We can plant more of them for the same cost, and over a period of time, we've got a fuller look, a little more presentation, but not too big and bulky, low and colorful. I do want a nice healthy measure of mulch tucked around the plant base, but I want to be sure really not to 
cover or smother the base of the plant too with mulch. That would be just like installing them too deep. Well, we've gone ahead and finished out this bed in order to really show you exactly the way things have shaped up. The mulch is all wet down with the sprinkler system and that's when it looks its best, when it's all fresh, newly installed and moist. Can you, can you see the Aztec grass, the way it does link from one side to the next? Then again, we've dropped down lower with the blue juniper and the lantana here. This needs a little time to get established, but as the yellow color of the gold just comes out on the lantana, it will connect the links. And then we're taking on the shape of the bed line here. Can you see the grass too? The way it covers just the big link, pulling the driveway almost out of the picture. Well, now that we're mulched from here down to the entranceway, let's go back right where we came from and show you some of the finished looks. The, the little bit of additional berming, again, when everything is completed and finished out, just looks even better. Again, friends, easy to mow lines. There will be no trouble with uh, either walk behind mowers or a small mower getting it out of uh, around these beds here. I like the way we come down and our little symmetrical planting of the palm trees with just the Asiatic jasmine and the blue juniper. Colorful year round in the cold weather as well as the warm. We need a little time for maturity to set in, but that kind of takes care of itself. We've even added uh, a couple sago palms here for accent. Uh, friends, please meet uh, Doug Alderman with Nightscaping. Doug is really our lighting design expert and consultant here on this project. Doug, pleasure having you today and really all the help that you provided for us. Nice to be working with you on another lighting project. Lighting design. Let's talk about that. Um, what does it really entail? Gary, lighting design is both an art and a science. You often hear us say that. Uh, in developing our design conclusions, we use a little bit of both. The art side uh, a lot of times starts with the client themselves. I think the important thing to remember is that uh, when we begin the uh, initial design consultation and, and developing the initial design conclusion, what does the client perceive as artful? What's maybe some of their favorite focal points? Identifying the answer why light is so important. Generally speaking, I think it starts with aesthetics and beauty. From okay. then on, they'll want to, uh, want to know how it's going to make their house safe and secure. Okay. But it's all a bonus. If they want beauty and aesthetics, the safety and security kind of follow along. The other part of the art in, in your client's design here was that we were able to start with some architectural features at the beginning of a very uh, uh, unusually long driveway. Yes, there's a long stretch here. I mean, uh, as a designer too, I was trying to make that look as pleasing as possible. Uh, now we can do that at night or enhance that with some lighting, huh? That's what we did. We took the, the winding driveway, which was, I believe, about 130 feet, Gary, mm -hmm. and we lit the vertical plane. And by that, I mean we uplit the focal points to navigate the visitor through the space. Along the way, now you're talking uh, the palms in this case, uh, some of the magnolia trees, and so that their headlights are going through here, but they're seeing something out their side windows and even ahead of them. By lighting the vertical plane, you're able to see in the distance. And once we got past the S-curve, so to speak, then we take in the major focal point. What we've truly designed here is a foreground, midground, and background up okay. to the major focal uh, the point. The foreground or 
our walls basically out here, the accent walls, curb appeal even at the, at the street as passerbys go. Curb appeal was very important in this design. We had excellent subjects to work with with these decorative walls. The walls, the columns, uh, even the address. Uh, the homeowner, that was one of those requirements. Can you show our address because no one can see that at night? That was most important and I think we did that well with our little accent light. The background then would be the house. The garage faced the street and what we were trying to do was just to play off of the garage with a gentle wash of light of which we did with mounting a fixture in a tree. You couldn't get up close to the foundation of the house because the asphalt went right up there to it. it the asphalt met, met the foundation uh -huh. so we were able to go up into the tree and to uh, provide a soft wash of light across the facade of the garage mm -hmm. just to accent it but not to play it up for the client. Mm -hmm. We want to see some of the architecture of the home instead of just all walls and up lighting. And that's what we did. We're trying to incorporate the architectural features with the plant materials. The different lamp types afford us the selection of creating that grazing effect on the walls. We have photometric charts that we refer to quite often in the design process. The photometric charts tell us the width of the beam spread, how, how narrow the beam spread is, the intensities of the different lamp types. Now, all lamps aren't created equal as well. Isn't that true? You have different wattages to deal with or work Different with. wattages, different beam spreads, different intensities, and they all play off of color, form, textures, and the things that we have to work with in the design. Tell us then, some of the wing walls and the accent walls, uh, what type of lighting there did you use? We wanted to control the brightness. A big part of what we have to work with is what we call reflected light. And if you have a light colored wall, you're gonna get some bounce of light from too intense of a lamp bulb. So you tone those down a little bit, a lower wattage in that case? We tone those down considerably, yes okay. sir. Now, uh, about the science of the system, or, or the engineering part, uh, I mean, this wasn't just thrown together haphazardly. Your first visit out here, you took notes, you drew a sketch so that you would be able to plan not only your parts and your material and your takeoff, how much wire, and then you started somewhat zoning uh, this whole project together. It's not run on one main lead line or wire, is it? No, the common uh, thought process is that the wire loops from fixture to fixture to fixture, and in this case it doesn't. This design was fairly sophisticated. In the front entry, including the walls and the driveway, we had 28 light fixtures. We used over 2,000 feet of cable. We had uh, 11 different cable runs, all going back to the power center. Okay, the power center, the controller. Now, these leads come back, and how do you know what to do with it there? That's an important part of of the planning before the initial installation. You want to know what the total watts are on each cable so that you can back into the power center capacity, so to speak. And know how to zone it because you have four zones on your controller, is that correct? You have four zones on the controller. On this system we used two controllers. We had one that was for the driveway front entrance of which was a thousand watt controller. And then we had one that was dedicated to the lights and the pathways up around the house. Okay, so that was a 500 watt. So two controllers in this, in this system. I thought I'd show you some of the things that we were really aiming to accomplish. That was to remove the hedge, some of the big bulky look here, add some specimen trees, and then stay with a lower look. And we were to add some impact or crossover with the Aztec, the Iris, and even the Ilex Shillings. But look at the Aztec, the way it just meanders over and kind of gives us that movement that we're looking for, a little S-curve all the way to here.
Now, if you've learned one aspect that you can apply to your own home's beautification project, we've accomplished something. I'm Gary Allen. I'll see you soon.